Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to build our fourth Formic control, which is the radio buttons component. To implement a group of radio buttons, we need to use the render props pattern for the field component. So it is not as straightforward as the previous three components, but at the same time, it's not difficult either. If you've gone through the earlier videos in the series, it should be straightforward to understand how this component works. In the UI, radio buttons form a control would look like this. There are three distinct elements. A form label, which is nothing but a label HTML element. A form input, which is the field component from formic. And finally, the field error, which is an error message component, again from formic. The field though is actually a list of HTML input and label elements, which allows you to make only one selection. This has to be considered when creating a radio buttons component. Let's take a look at the props that would be required to implement this component. First and foremost, we set the control prop to radio, which is required to determine the type of formic control we need to render. Second, we need a label prop, which will be the label text for the form field. And third, we pass in the all important name prop, which is required by Formic for the field as well as the error message components. Another essential prop is the options prop, which is basically an array of objects. Each object will contain key value pairs, which we use to render the individual radio buttons for the component. All right, with this UI and props in mind, let's write the code. We're going to implement this Formic control again in three simple steps. First step, we write the code in a new component specific to the field type. In our case, a radio buttons component. Second step, we write code in the Formic control component. Third and final step, we write code in the Formic container component, which will help us test the code in the browser. So let's begin with step one. For step one, we need to create a new component for the radio buttons Formic control. So within the source folder, within the components folder, I'm going to create a new file called radiobuttons.js. Within this file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a function component. For this component, we would need the field and error message components from Formic and also the text error component. So let's import them. Next, let's talk about the props. From the props that this component receives, we're going to destructure, label, name, options, and leave the rest. Finally, we are going to add in the JSX. The JSX involves rendering a label, the field component, and the error message component. The field component though, has to use the render props pattern. Sounds complicated, but it definitely is not. Let's begin with the div tag. This div tag has a class name equal to form control. Within this div tag, we first have the label. The text is going to be the label prop. Next, we have the field component. We set name equal to the name prop, and we are going to spread out rest of the props as they are. We need to use the render props pattern. So within the opening and closing field tags, curly braces, and we add function as children. We're going to have an arrow function. This arrow function gets a couple of props, but we are interested in only one of them. So within the parentheses, we are directly going to destructure the field prop. If this is confusing, please visit the video where we take a deeper look at the field component. That should answer all your questions. Back to our code, this arrow function needs to return some JSX. And this is where the options prop comes into picture. We use the options array to render the individual radio buttons. But first, I want you to take a look at the structure of a radio button. So I'm here at the MDN docs for radio inputs. If I scroll down, we get an example where we have three radio buttons. 
Each radio button comprises of an input element and a label element. Each input has type is equal to radio and an ID attribute which is different across the radio buttons. We also have a name attribute which is the same across the different buttons. And finally, the value attribute, which again is different. For the label element, we have the inner text and also the for attribute that points at the ID. I want you to pause this video for five seconds and keep these attributes in mind because this is exactly what we will be rendering in our component. So back in VS Code, our function needs to return a group of radio buttons based on the options prop. Now to iterate over an array in React, we use the map method. So return options.map. And for each option, we're going to return a combination of input and label. Since we can't return multiple elements, we use react.fragment at the top and pass in the key prop to avoid the warning. Key is equal to option dot key. Next, we add the input element. Input type is equal to radio and the ID is going to be equal to option dot value. Next is the all important bit. We spread the fields props and then specify the value prop, which is equal to option dot value. Finally, we're going to specify checked is equal to field dot value is equal to option dot value. If I format this, we now have our input element. And this got complex all of a sudden, right? Well, don't worry. I'm going to explain this again with the actual value of these variables. At the moment, I just want you to understand the JSX at a high level. All right, once we have the input, we need the label element. So label text is going to be equal to option dot key and HTML4 is going to be equal to option dot value. And that is our field component. The last part of the component is the error message component. And we set name equal to the name props and component is equal to text error. All right, that is our first step, creating the radio buttons component. The second step is to add code in the formic control component. And this is the easy bit. For the switch statement, if the case is radio, we return the radio buttons component that we have just created. Make sure to import it at the top. On the radio buttons component, leaving out control, we pass in rest of the props. That is our step two. Returning the radio buttons component if the control prop is radio. For the third and final step, we add code in the formic container component to test the code we have written for the first two steps. We're going to start off by defining a new constant called radio options, which will contain the list of options for our radio buttons. I'm going to copy paste the array. Second, we add a property to the initial values object. This is going to be radio button or radio option and the initial value is an empty string. Next, let's add the required validation to this field. So in the validation schema, make a copy of this and change select option to radio option. Finally, in the JSX, we can include the formic control. So formic control and let's add the props. First and foremost, we need to specify what kind of a control is this component. So we say control is equal to radio. After that, we pass in the label prop, which is equal to the string radio topic. And then the all important name prop, 
name is going to be equal to radio option. We then add the options prop, which is equal to radio options. All right, that completes our step three. We can now save all the files and test this out in the browser. On page load, we have our radio buttons along with the labels. If I try to submit the form, I get the required validation error. I fill in the form. Click on submit and you can see the values including the one for our group of radio buttons. I can pick a different option and the form state updates. If I click on submit, you can see the new value logged in the console. Our radio buttons formic control works as expected. Now you might still be unclear as to how this component works so let me go over it one more time. In the radio buttons component, I'm going to log this field props for better understanding. All right, from a React point of view, the code execution starts in the formic container. We include the formic control component specifying radio as the control prop, a label, a name, and options. If you take a look at the radio options value, it is an array of objects with key value pairs. The key is the label for the individual radio button and the value is the value of that particular radio button. If you quickly take a look at the UI, each of the labels is a key in our radio options array. Value is what would be the value of that particular button. It is also the value that gets submitted when you submit the form. So far, so good. Next, we take a look at the implementation of formic control. Over here, all that we do is evaluate the control prop and render the appropriate component. Since our control is radio, we return the radio buttons component. We pass down every other prop as it is. Now the execution comes to the radio button component. At the top level, we have an enclosing div tag with some styling. Then we need to render a label for the overall component. Our label is radio topic, which we see in the UI. Then we use the render props pattern for the field component. This field should render a list of input and label pairs. And this is where the magic is happening. So let's compare this JSX with the MDN docs for radio buttons. You can see that we have an input and a label. Back in MDN docs, you can see that there is an input and a label. On the input, type is equal to radio. We have that in our code as well. There is an ID attribute which we have in our code as well. This ID prop though is the value of each object in the radio options array. So we have our option one, our option two, and our option three. If we inspect the element in the browser, you can see ID our option one, ID our option two, and ID our option three. A unique ID for each of the buttons. All right, next let's go over the more obvious one, value. We have that in our code as well. Since we know the value is unique, we ended up using it for ID as well. We then have the label element. The text is the key in the options array and HTML4 will point to the ID of the input. So for attribute equal to the ID attribute, of course, we have the entire label. So we have 90% of the code that MDN docs has. The one attribute we haven't specified is the name attribute or have we now. This is where the field props comes into play. You can see that we have logged 
the field props in the console. If you take a look at that, you can see that we have the name property. This will automatically get added to the input element. If I inspect it, you can see that every input has the same name attribute. Name equals radio option, name equals radio option, name is equal to radio option. But what this field is additionally taking care of is handling the change and blur events on each of the radio components. On change and on blur. It uses the name property and auto binds the on blur and on change handlers. This is how Formic is in control of our component. So we have achieved 100% of what MDN Docs is doing. One thing that might get you is the order of the value and the field props. You can see that field props also has a value property. However, this is the value of the entire form field, not of the individual radio buttons. That is the reason after spreading the field props, you need to include the value attribute and set it to option.value. This will override the value property from before. And of course, at the end, to be able to keep track of the checked radio button, we check if the value of this particular field is equal to the value of the individual radio button. If it is, then the button is checked. And of course, at the end, we have the error message component to display the error. Now, I want you to understand this really well because the next video, which is on checkboxes, works in a similar way. And I'm not going to dive deep into explaining how that component works as well. So if you have to give this video another watch and make sure you understand thoroughly what the radio buttons component is doing. So that is how you create a reusable radio buttons formic control with formic in react. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.